A year and a half ago, in a scene that seems almost unimaginable now, Melville and I crowded into a room with 50 other people to listen to live music. We were on sabbatical at Holden Village, a Lutheran renewal center in a remote part of the North Cascade Mountains in Washington State. It was early April on the night of the concert. There were several feet of snow still on the ground and everyone and everything had not yet emerged from hibernation. In our thermal underwear and two pairs of wool socks with blankets on our laps, the village gathered to listen to Marta and her dad Rolf play and sing folk music they had arranged. Toward the end of the set, they did Last Song, originally by Jason Webley. Rolf invited us to sing along, and by the second repeat of the chorus, we all joined in. I can still hear our voices blending with Marta's. And we say that the world isn't dying. And we pray that the world isn't dying. Just maybe the world isn't dying. I've been reading the symptoms for a while. Maybe she's heavy with child. We're stepping out of our lectionary cycle to observe the feast of St. Luke, writer of the third gospel and also of the Acts of the Apostles. We don't know much about Luke. Tradition says that he was a physician and he is associated with healing. Bishop Breidenthal asked our diocese to observe St. Luke's day today to pray for healing for our nation and for those who have died from COVID-19 around the world. We enter Luke's gospel at a critical moment. Jesus has been baptized by John in the River Jordan. He spent 40 days in the wilderness resisting the temptations of the devil. He's come back to Galilee, his native region, to begin his public ministry. He stops at Nazareth, his hometown, for the Sabbath, and he stands up in the synagogue to read a portion of the book of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, God has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And then Jesus proclaims, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. It's an astonishing claim to make. It's an astonishing place to make that claim. Nazareth is a backwater, a small town out in the boondocks, there's only a few hundred people living there. All of the action and excitement in this part of Galilee is in Sepphoris, three miles away from Nazareth, or it's further off in the capital Jerusalem, or still further off in Rome, the center of the empire. Scripture wouldn't be fulfilled in Nazareth. Nothing of any interest ever happens in Nazareth. But it's here that God's anointed one appears. And it's here that Jesus proclaims good news to the poor, release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, freedom to the oppressed, the year of the Lord's favor to those in debt. For the kingdom of God has come near in the person of Jesus. It's hard for the people of Nazareth to believe. They are poor. Their lives are captive to an economic and political system that weighs them down with debt. Among them are people who are blind, sick, in pain. Local kings and even empires come and go, and the hardscrabble reality of life in Nazareth never changes. Even imagining something different seems impossible. Yet here is Jesus saying the way things are is not God's will. God's will is peace, wholeness, justice, healing for all people in the kingdom of God. The kingdom isn't here yet, not fully, but if you look closely, you can see glimpses of it breaking into this world, even here in Nazareth. Something new is about to be born among you. Just maybe the world isn't dying. Maybe she's heavy with child. For the rest of his life on earth, Jesus acts as the midwife of the kingdom of God. He heals people. He heals a paralyzed man, a woman bent over. He raises two children from the dead. He works miracles. He feeds a huge crowd with five loaves of bread and two fish. He calms a storm when the disciples are in danger of drowning. He walks on water. Jesus does these deeds of power not only for their own sake, but as a sign of the kingdom of God come near. Wherever the sick are healed, 
Wherever broken hearts are bound up, wherever the hungry are fed, wherever people are set free from fear and oppression, there is the kingdom of God. And when we stop to think about it, it makes sense that Jesus brings the kingdom near to places like Nazareth. If Jesus had started out in a center of power like Jerusalem, the powers that be would have stamped out the kingdom of God at the first sign of it. It's at the edge of empire in backwaters like Nazareth and Capernaum, where the kingdom can be born safely. Jesus says the kingdom of God is like yeast, quietly working away to leaven a batch of dough. You hardly know the yeast is there until it takes off and boom, you have bread. The kingdom of God is like that, working away out on the periphery where it won't be noticed until it bursts into the world. These last eight months feel like they have lasted hundreds of years. Everyone I know is struggling. A friend of mine observes that we are all sick. Some of us are sick with COVID-19, and the rest of us are sick with anxiety, fear, stress, isolation, loneliness. I would add that our society is sick and has been for a long time. Ed Young, a science journalist for The Atlantic, says, Water running along a pavement will readily seep into every crack. So too did the unchecked coronavirus seep into every fault line in the modern world. He points to America's chronic underfunding of public health, understaffed nursing homes and overstuffed prisons, an expensive healthcare system that can't cope with surges in demand, employment-based insurance that disappears when you lose your job, longstanding inequities in race and income. People who pay attention to such things have known about these fault lines, but now we all see them. This awful year is an apocalypse in the technical sense of the term. It reveals that which is hidden. And what has been revealed is that our society is in a bad way. It may seem as though the world is dying. But maybe the world isn't dying. Maybe she's heavy with child. Maybe the kingdom of God is getting ready to be born here among us. And if we look closely, we can see it breaking into this world. Not in the corridors of power, not at the center, but out at the edges where it slips past the notice of the powerful. The kingdom of God is here in a couple of friends taking a newly bereaved widower out to dinner after his wife's funeral helping to bind up his broken heart. The kingdom of God is here in white people learning about systematic racism and doing their part to end it, setting their friends and neighbors free from oppression. The kingdom of God is here in people giving generously despite the uncertain economy, setting aside their fear and trusting that God will provide enough, whatever happens. Wherever Jesus is, the kingdom of God has come near. And Jesus is here because that is who he is, Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus' words in Nazareth are true for us, too. Today, this scripture is being fulfilled in our hearing. Where do you see the kingdom of God breaking into our world? What are the Nazareths of our day? those out-of-the-way places where the kingdom can be born safely? How are you joining in with Jesus' work of healing that which is broken, binding up wounds, setting captives free, proclaiming good news? Maybe the world isn't dying. I've been reading the symptoms for a while. Maybe she's heavy with child.